Okay, welcome back to Introduction to Programming. Now we've seen quite a bit of C statements that we can uh, use uh, to create our programs. Today we're going to finish this up and slowly we're going to move towards C++. We've already seen how to program a class. Uh, we've seen this in the, pro in the example where we made a line that scrolls through. We can quickly show this again. So as I press keys, the line is shifting from right to left. And it's a little bit wiggly uh, because we're adding a random one or minus one or the same uh, value to that. And if we press Q, we get out again. Um, this is what we programmed and we used the, the concept of a line as a class. Now, today we're going to step away one more time from the classes and we're going to see or repeat basically what we've seen in C. Now, that we're going to do by changing this program into a game. Um, well, let's call it a scrolling game, where we're going to use this line as uh, the horizon of a landscape that is scrolling by, and where we can you know, create a figure that is, for instance, trying to avoid crashing into the ground. Um, this is what we're going to do, and this requires a few modifications. Now, one of the modifications is that when we execute this, uh, we have to press a key each time to scroll by. Now this is okay for some games that require lots of strategic thinking, for instance, but we want to have uh, a little bit more of an arcade game that goes for speeds. Now what we can do there is we can use a function that is actually used together with the getCharacter function in, N in the ncurses library. Now getCharacter basically waits until the user presses a key and then continues. That's why in this loop, the program halts here until a character is being pressed. It puts it in the C variable, which is a character, and then loops uh, over here and starts again with this while loop. And we're going to use this while loop as our uh, main game loop that basically over here um, treats everything that is uh, with respect to users control uh, section and where we basically here wait until uh, the user has pressed a key. However, after a while, after a certain timeouts, we basically start the loop again. And this we can do with a function that is called timeout. And it is also part of the ncurses library. Now it takes uh, an argument, in this case I'll use hundreds, which is the amount of milliseconds that this timeout takes. So after 100 milliseconds or a tenth of a second, if the user has not pressed the key yet, it will go out of this get character function, get character function, and then starts the while loop again. So um, set the timeout for get character to 100 milliseconds. There. If we save this and recompile this, let's use the same, or let's uh, use a different. Let's use the the executable game now um, and not forget the curses library. If you now execute game, you'll see that without hands, you know, I don't have to press keys anymore. The landscape is scrolling by. If I press Q, I still can uh, exit the game. So that is a little bit, you know, game-like where I don't really have the full control. Another thing we can do is actually use color in a more particular way because we wanted to just get a squiggly line printed on the um, screen at first, but now we want to have this line as kind of the horizon, so the, the difference between the sky, for instance, and the grounds. So here we will draw the horizon now instead of a line. We'll use the line class because the horizon is a line in the end. Um, but in the else we can draw other things. Um, or we can color, for instance, first, let's do it like this. So we can first color the ground. The ground we can see by um, the J control variable, which goes over the lines. So it starts at line zero, line one, line two, etc. If this line then suddenly is equal to a position on the line, it will create or print this line. Uh, it will create this equal sign and then um, give it an average or a random color. Um, and after this, it basically prints black spaces. This is this color pair uh, 
5 is basically a white foreground and a black background. And that's why the rest of the screen is black. Now we want to make this green if we are below that line. So we have to add an if test. Um, if j is then bigger than this over here, then um, get y pos um, i. So basically this is our method from our, um, uh, our line object in this case. Uh, which allows us to get the y positions of particular points on the line. And if this is the case, then we can um, change the attribute for it's the color, uh, not to black, but to green. So we'll just paste this over here, make sure that the indentation is correct. And instead of five, we can go for green. So for instance, for color pair three, uh, no, sorry, the background here, color pair four has um, a green background. So from now on, if everything that is below the line will be green. And the same we can do um, in other cases. So in this case, in all other cases, we can say that the color um, is in that case blue, for instance. Now we don't, oh yeah, we do have this in color pair one. So for instance, we could use color pair one to have as a blue backgrounds. Of course, we could just add colors if we needed them, but I'm just reusing those again. So after doing this, recompiling and using it again, I now have a scrolling landscape um, made by text, basically. Um, that is one component. The next component is that we have to add um, a character that can fly, for instance, in the air. Like, let's call it a plane. Now, what defines a plane in this case? We could create eventually a class. We will eventually create a class. But let's first start the hard way. So instead of saying we have um, uh, uh, a class or an object called plane that is part of a class, we'll just use what defines a plane in this case. And this is just the position uh, as in the lines and in the columns, so x and y position. So that's what I'll just call it. So we have our x position. Um, after in its screen, we already have uh, columns and lines available to us. So in this case, I'll say columns will start at, for instance, one quarter of the columns. So columns divided by four. That is our X position. And our Y position is then um, the lines divided by two, for instance. There we go. Or let's make three. Um, so it, it's, it starts quite high, but not really um, at the top. right? So this is our x and y position of the plane. We'll call that the user's plane. Um, and the user's plane can then be um, drawn as well. We have to draw it first. So let's do that right here. So we uh, have here the, the drawing or um, from here on, but I can probably easier to do it here, draw the sky and ground, there we go. Um, now what we can also do is here at the end, or we, let's just do it as another if, if then loop. So we can basically say here, draw the user's plane. This will be again an if-then test. So if we are uh, in a position where the user's plane should be, we draw that. Otherwise, we draw the sky and the ground. Um, so let's just look first of all where the plane needs to be drawn. So there we go. So if we um, are on a position where the user's plane should be drawn, then that is fairly easy to see because we have x position and y position. The x position is the columns, so we've already seen that is the j position over here. So we can just say um, if, um, or the, the j position is the line, so it's the y position actually. So we start with i, if i equals the x position of our plane, and j equals the y position of our plane, then we need to draw our plane. 
and drawing our plane in this case means that we have to set a color to make sure that we can see this plane properly. We could set it to blue, but in this case, I think I will set it to five, oops, sorry, color pair five. So we have a back black ground and a white foreground, which is a little bit nicer to see, or you will see it, I think, a little bit, a little bit better this way. And there we can create an, a character, so we can say move um, and add a character, or we could actually um, use a string even. So we can create several characters in a row, because a plane is usually a little bit longer than just one character, um, and we'll draw that on um, ij, and then we create something that looks like a plane. Um, I'm not very good at drawing, not even in uh, text drawing, but we can just do, do it like this, for instance. That's the tail. That is the front, and that is the that is the real front, right? So this looks a little bit kind of like a plane. So do it like this. There we go. Now, uh, once we have our plane drawn, oh, let me check actually because I think here. Um, we need to, we're, we're scrolling through the lines and the columns. So first line and then for each column. So we're going to print this when i is at the x position, so at the, the right column. Now what we want, however, is we want to start before that. Otherwise this um, um, square bracket or brace is going to be um, drawn and then later everything will be overridden by our background. So in this case we should do i minus uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 probably. I think we'll see later whether this works in order to be able to um, get this drawn properly. So this way we can um, everything is being uh, colored black, uh, no, uh, uh, green or blue, uh, depending on whether it's below or above the line. And if it's part of, and once we arrive at IJ, so at this position here where the plane's um, front should be, oops, where the plane's front should be um, drawn, there we basically create a string. Go back four places and write the string. So that, that should work. So that is what our plane will look like. And then we have to control this plane, of course. We want to, for instance, move it up and down. Let's start with that. That is fairly simple. And for that, we'll use the key presses again. So when the user presses a particular key, we can go up, and another key will uh, make the plane go down. So we'll look at, for instance, oh, we have to uh, use a switch statement because we start with first two types of key presses, but there will be more most likely. And as we've seen for a switch statement, we can use different cases and we have to use break to stop those cases. So the first case is when the user presses a particular key to go up, could for instance go for the W key. And in this case, when the user goes up, we have to change the Y position of our plane and we have to decrease it because zero is at the top and then the number of lines is at the bottom. So if we decrease that position, it goes up. So we say that the y position then is decreased. We can also make sure that that doesn't happen when the user is completely at the top. So then the user would disappear or would have perhaps a problem. So as long as the position is, say, bigger than zero, um, or bigger, yeah, bigger than zero, so one or higher, uh, we can decrease uh, the y position. So that's for going up. Let's do the same for going down. Um, so if we go down, let's call, put that to the S key. So if the user presses S, we're going down. In this case, the Y position is then incremented. There we go. And incrementing means that uh, the Y position needs to be smaller than the amount of lines. Although in this case, uh, the lines go from zero to lines. So we have to probably do lines minus one. And if we do that, we basically have our two user controls. So we can not only press Q to get out of this um, big loop over here, but we can also press W and S to make our plane go up and to make our plane, plane go down. Okay, did I save already? Let's do it one more time. Let's compile that. Oh, a string is apparently 
problem here. Why is that? Mm. Oh, it's the escape sequence here. So this character was is an escape character, which I should not use. So let's just get another character, something like this, for instance. There we go. It's more like a rocket than a plane, but anyway. Right. So let's see what has happened. So basically we have now our plane. I'm not entirely sure why this front is um, not there. This is probably because I um, did a miscalculation. Let's see this in a second. But if I go up and down, I basically can make this plane fly over our landscape. That works quite well. So if I press the key, you know, I go up and down the W and S keys. If I press Q, I exit. Now, this should, I assume, be I minus 5 to make sure that this still works. Let's see. Yeah. So now we have something that works. So we have a plane that can fly um, over our landscape. Good. Now that we have this, um, we want to, of course, well, um, play it as a game where you can lose. And in this case, the easiest way to lose is to crash um, your plane into one of those hills. So if I would do this, then I would have to crash. In this case, there's no crashing uh, happening yet because there's no testing. But this is also fairly simple to add in this case. Now the crash is however something that we can somehow, that we need to uh, hold in our program. In this case, for instance, we can use this as a boolean. So we introduce a boolean crash, which let's not start with crashing already. So we'll start as a, a false boolean. And this boolean, uh, we can start as um, true before we draw everything. Let's make this as part of the drawing. And if we here in this case, when we draw and test whether um, our plane is on the line, on the horizon, um, then we crash, and then we set crash uh, uh, to true, otherwise it is false. Actually, it's the other way around. So let's set crash to false. Then if the user's plane is on the horizon, then we set it to, um, uh, to true. Or, let me check. Um, well, in this case, we can actually say if we draw the horizon and we never draw the user's plane after that, then we have a crash. So we could indeed say if crash is true, we assume that the crash is always true, and we only set it to false if we've drawn our plane. So in this case, we should say um, crash equals false. Then we know that the user's plane was drawn and uh, did not hit the line. Because otherwise it would be uh, be drawn over here, right? so that is that is the I think the nicest way of doing this, or a nice way of doing this. And what happens if we crash? Well, we should do something. We could make plane explode, um, but I think easier would be to um, just exit the game in this case. So we can do this after the user's control. So if we have a crash. And I'm not going to use the curly braces because we basically uh, can just make sure then that the game will uh, exit by saying, see, we force it again, whatever the user did earlier or whether it is timed out, we basically assign it the value Q so that the next um, iteration of this loop, this loop will stop working or will stop going through it and will immediately um, go to the end of the, of the executable. So if we do this, we should be able to play our game with the risk that if we hit the ground, um, we, hit, uh, we exit our game. So let's wait until a good mountain comes. Okay, no, no one is coming. Let's go then down and bam. So now we have the beginning of a game that uh, starts to look enticing. Um, and this is you know, just repeating everything we've seen so far. So we have this double nested for loops to draw all the characters on our screen. And within this drawing, 
we've uh, been doing a lot of testing already. Whether this uh, cell that we drew uh, belongs to the line, whether it belongs to the user's plane, or the horizon, to the user's plane, or the sky and ground. And then we give it a different color, or we can draw something that somehow approaches that uh, signature of a plane, for instance.